I feel like, yeah, I feel like the personal statement is one of the most important pieces of your application. This is the path that you want to take. And you know, you've like worked so hard to get to that point. You know, oh, yeah. if you have one space after a period, that's going to be how you're going to do the entire application. Mm -hmm. you get bullet points for one of the sections, you're doing the same bullet point for everything. <laughs> oh man, congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. But no, okay, so you got in on your first try. Helping others is a calling. It's not a job. Hey guys, I'm Boris. I'm a physician assistant. This is... Hi, I'm Mimi. I'm a first year physician assistant student. And so this video has been a little while in the making. I'm actually very excited to bring this to you because you just hear me prattling on and on about my you know, journey to PA school years and years ago, my advice, X, Y, and Z. I thought it would be really cool to bring on a current first year PA student who actually had a pretty long journey up to PA school and hear you know, her perspective, how she got in, what she's doing now, how it actually is in the program, all of that stuff. So with that being said, I just want to turn the floor over to Mimi and just ask her my first question, which basically is, Mimi, can you describe your PA school journey, how you got there, uh, why you decided to be a PA, and if you're comfortable sharing some of your stats, GPA, PCE, all of that good stuff? Yeah. Um, so I graduated high school in 2019. And honestly, high school was a period where I like had absolutely no idea like what I wanted to do with my life. I honestly didn't even like consider college at one point since I truly didn't care much about my grades um, or my classes. If I'm being honest, I was like kind of lost and um, just didn't know like what I wanted to do at all. But I knew I like had some sort of like interest in medicine um, and then I graduated high school uh, and then enrolled in like a 19 day EMT course just to see if this is something that I want to continue doing. So after I finished that program, I um, started looking for jobs and immediately like started working as an EMT. And I honestly like fell in love with the job and even like the schooling um, itself. I feel like during high school, you take like all these classes and it's like, you know, not something that you're interested in. So it was like really hard for me to enjoy it. But that's where I found that that's what I like want to continue like exploring. Um, and then I actually enrolled at um, a community college just to give my, myself another chance at, you know, being a good student because I honestly, that really didn't, um, occurred to me much in high school. I did like sports in high school and then got a really bad like concussion from it. And I kind of just, you know, like fell through um, since then. Um, and then like being like a first gen college student as well, I feel like there's just like always this pressure um, that came with that. And so it just, I don't know, I just kind of was like all, all over the place if I'm being honest and didn't know how to like navigate that. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna, Okay, all right, very, two very important questions. I'm just very curious. One, what was your high school GPA? Uh, my high school GPA was, um, what was it? It's like a 3.2. Okay, so not tragic. You weren't like the kids yeah. sitting in the back of the class playing calculator games. That was me. Um, but you were like middle of the road, definitely not getting into an Ivy League, not like the kid that everyone thought would get into like med school or even grad school. Just kind of like middle of the road, pretty average. Um, and yeah. of course you had to fix that in order to get into PA school. And then mm -hmm. also what sport did you play? I did like track and cross country. And then where I got the concussion was when I decided to try rugby my junior <laughs> year. <laughs> I was wondering like, how do you get a concussion running cross country? Do you like fall <laughs> off a bridge or something? Just head first. Mm -hmm. Oh man, rugby. Yep. You yep. seem like someone who just like gets an idea into their head, even something kind of crazy and you just go for it. Oh, yep. That's exactly me. That's exactly like when I was like applying to PA school too. It was like out of impulse, just as the same thing as like the EMT program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Parents are probably like, all right, you need a job. You're an adult. Maybe try this, maybe try that. And you're like, no, I want to do something that like 2% of people get to do. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing? This is not a great idea. And sure enough, here you are. And I'm it. still going to do it. I oh, was yeah, like, I'm still going to try it. and see what happens. Literally, man. That's that's really cool. And then the other thing is you said you're a first generation college student. That's right. 
so your parents didn't go to college or did you guys immigrate recently? Like, were you first yeah, generation? My, um, a lot of my family reside um, in the same area in North Carolina mm -hmm. and um, they immigrated from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so my parents did, yeah, immigrate and they came to the States when they were pretty young, like when they were a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, they, they've been, here ever since i've been born and raised in the same um state as like a lot of my family who also immigrated here so you're a first generation american um yes that, that's how that works yeah because like your parents come over they're i don't know if they're first generation but like someone born to them i think is a first generation uh we can google yeah, i don't know how it works but <laughs> yeah i know people ask me that all the time because we moved from russia and i was five when we moved so am i first generation am i zero i don't know yeah um but so you're a first generation american first generation college student so do you feel like you kind of had to like figure it all out yourself because your parents weren't college students in america they didn't know how to do everything how to navigate it yeah so um i definitely felt like uh the pressure to like do well exceptionally well in high school that's why um it just because i felt like because of that it pushed me away from wanting to succeed in high school and also just like feeling like i put this a lot of myself too but just like comparing myself to like other people around me um really like played a huge role too because i'm like well i like honestly just don't know like where to even begin or where to start or what I even like or how to like further, um, you know, like see that I didn't do like much extracurriculars either. Mm -hmm. So you grew up with your dad saying you need good grades, but then when you asked him how he'd be like, I don't know, figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Literally likewise. Yeah. Literally likewise. It's funny that we have like such a similar story in that. And I mean, I feel like a lot of those people do end up kind of succeeding, but a lot of them kind of don't because there's so much pressure and you don't know what to do. Right. And so I find that people like us kind of like find success a little bit later. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't get into PA school yeah. at 21 and then get certified by 24. And then, you know, like those super success stories, uh, we kind of had to figure it out for a year or two and then we get there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that when I like um, started at the community college, that's where I'm like, whoa, like this, this is what like mm -hmm. studying is like or being in a classroom is like, because I just never liked going to class in high school. <laughs> so it's just like a totally different world, right? Like you're still sitting exactly. in class, you still have to like yeah. study and do whatnot. But like, you never did that at all in high school, you just kind of like coasted. Mm -hmm. Yep, just yep. try to get my way through. But then it was actually serious. And I feel like that time of like the two years at the community college um i was able to like truly like grow so much and i don't know what like how my path would have looked like if i just decided to go to four-year college since also like the financial aspect of two you save so much money um and i yeah like yeah i'm really blessed to have had that opportunity to do that first yeah. so you went to community college for two years mm -hmm. got and my you transferred I Wait, transferred. Do you see that? Like balloons. Oh, it's when you do the peace sign. Oh, that's Maybe interesting. You only get one per Zoom call. That was so weird. Huh. <laughs> okay, apparently Zoom does that. Thanks, Zoom. Oh. Uh, but so, okay, so you went to community college for two years, and then mm -hmm. you transferred into a four-year college? I did, yeah. And it was actually my dream school. Like, growing up, I always, like, um, thought of, like, UNC Chapel Hill as, like, my dream school. Mm -hmm. And I just like heard all about it. And like, it's like good for like medicine too. So I was like, this is where I wanted to go. But like, it just felt impossible during high school, just because I wasn't at a point that, you know, what they were like looking for in like, um, applicants. Yeah. So I applied, and then um, transferred after two years. Are they super competitive? They're pretty competitive, I would say. Mm hmm like yeah. right out of high school, but then coming as a transfer student, even from community college, it's kind of easier to do maybe. Oh yeah, I, I definitely think so. There's also like some schools have like programs where it's like um, kind of like a granted admissions program. Mm. And so that's, that's what I was a part of. I found out that I was gonna go to that um, 
university like my second semester because I applied to this the, the granted admissions program that they had the joint program with the community college and like the university uh-huh. and it was like an agreement like um if you get accepted into this program you're kind of like um out of spot where it's like if you maintain like your GPA and everything then you can successfully transfer there and not have to go through like the whole other um admissions yeah like application that's really cool i wonder if it's because it's local like they're trying to help out the local yeah. community and get people from community college into this like really prestigious mm-hmm. school yeah i think that's yeah, yeah what it something is. a lot of people don't think about so like saving an absolute enormous amount of money because you see chapel hill and like most you know four-year colleges are more expensive than community college so that's an option i wish more people would consider yeah yeah i feel like Honestly, like when I went to community college, I thought like I was just so ashamed of it just because mm-hmm. like, yeah, um, that was just like the stigma, I guess, around community college. It's just you assume that that's like your only option or like you didn't get into like any other colleges. But looking right. back, I rec- like I highly recommend that to anyone, mm-hmm. you know, like not sure if like what they want to do um, or even just to save so much money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could see that being a stigma with some people. Like yeah. some people who like grow up in an environment where everybody goes to college and like how could you not? And so it's like, are you like you either can't afford it or your grades aren't good enough to like go to a four year? So that's why you went to community and they'd be like super judgmental. But then like here you are, way less in debt, still in the grad program that they probably didn't get into. You know what I mean? Like it's a great, great option. Oh, yeah. I really yeah, wish more people would consider sure. and just be open minded about these kind of alternative routes. Right. Um, even military being one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think there's just so many options out there that, mm-hmm. you know, to consider even. But with community college, I feel like the benefit is that it's just much smaller, like class sizes mm-hmm. than like if you go to like because um, my when I transferred, I was not used to like taking like a chemistry course with like. 200 other people and I was used to like being in a classroom of like 20 students so you really had that like time to you know talk to like your classmates and like even the professor asking questions I really like the community of that oh that's a really good point because like let's compare and contrast your first year so like you go to community college maybe it's not some super distinguished PhD maybe it's like a guy with a master's in chemistry teaching it but he's teaching it to like 15 people So he knows your name. He knows like what you're good at, what you're not good at. He'll personally help you uh, or she. Um, Whereas if you go to a big school, you got like two or 300 people in your intro to chemistry class. You'll never talk to your professor. You may talk to the TA uh, who's like a, you know, another student. And so you just don't get nearly as much personalized attention. It's like you can learn this or you can't. It's like a weed out course. Right. And only in your upper levels do you really get like personalized attention from the professors. Yeah. Whereas you got that from day one. Yeah, that's exactly like okay. how I felt. And then like the transition yeah. to, I really noticed like the the big difference mm-hmm. in that. Oh, that's such a good point too. Okay, so this is like an advertisement for community college, not sponsored. Yes. Uh, come on, <laughs> let's go, give us some sponsorships. Um, but no, so that's really awesome. I'm really glad you found success in community college. And so just kind of rewinding, you always had an inkling towards medicine for some reason, you just didn't know why? I... Yeah, I, I mean, I like my personal statement, I talked about like a time where um, I was like a, a hostess at a restaurant, a Chinese restaurant. Remember that. And I happened to see someone like go into cardiac arrest. And then there happened to be like some like healthcare workers who were just dining in that one night and they resuscitated the patient. And then like the EMTs, paramedics brought the patient out and they were like fine and conscious. And I was like, whoa, like that's, that's crazy. So I was like, wow, like I was just so intrigued by like mm-hmm. how that one action of like just being on someone's chest. Like this is when I was in um, probably like freshman year of high school mm-hmm. um, and I saw that and I was just like trying to snoop and look at the booth <laughs> where it happened. I was just like so curious. Oh my I was God. like, wow, I like, want to know more about this. Yeah. I mean, it was probably kind of a traumatizing experience at first too, you know? Yeah. It was scary. Cause I was like, Oh my gosh, like negative emotional spike. And then they come back and it's this like huge positive emotional spike. And you're like, how did this happen? This is magic. Yeah. It was insane. 
Awesome. So that's how you got into medicine is like that one story. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then, um, that's where I was like, um, initially pre-med in like my first year, probably of community college, I was like, I want to go to medical school. Mm. And I'd like, didn't know about like the PA profession initially mm -hmm. until I like just looked it up, like other options that I had just to work in healthcare. Mm -hmm. But I felt like the PA profession like aligned with what I wanted like better since um, you're still practicing like medicine, but just like in a shorter time frame. And I really liked how you can like switch specialties or like work in like all aspects of medicine. Mm -hmm. So is that what you focused your essay on, like that first event? And then like why specifically PA? It's like the shorter training and also the lateral mobility. Right. Yeah. And then I also talked a little bit about of like because um, I did some like medical mission trips to Guatemala and Costa Rica. And I worked closely with like the physicians there um, and then got a lot of time like talking to patients. And I really enjoyed just getting to know them and like hearing their stories and like their upbringings. And I felt like that would better align with like, um, like the physician assistant route. Hmm. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> the more essays I read, the more I, I don't really even know. I don't know how to verbalize this, but like lateral mobility is a big one, but I don't know if you caught the last episode with me and Elijah. Never mind, it's not out yet. Okay, sorry, spoiler alert. We talk about lateral mobility. And how, like, the more practice I get and the more PAs I meet, the more I realize almost no one takes advantage of it. Like, most people just kind of get into a specialty, they get really comfortable, and then they stay. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll, like, have a change of heart or, like, have to change jobs, and then, like, that's when they'll change. But a lot of people tend to, like, stay for years and years just because it's so much more comfortable. You know right. what you're doing already, right? You're not the new guy. Uh, so, like, we kind of talked about how lateral mobility, which is this big thing everyone writes their essays about, how, like, a lot of people don't even do it. And then, I don't know, like... It's whatever currently excites you about the profession, even if you may or may not necessarily do it. It's just, I guess, just make it personal, personal statement, whatever makes it, makes you like want to be a PA basically. Yeah. Yeah. Just write it well. Mimi's was awesome. <laughs> and that's all, all it really is. All thanks to you me. though. <laughs> yeah. We're going to plug that real quick. I, I don't know how many drafts Mimi and I went back and forth on, but I think I edited her essay. Well, we edited it together, but like I gave her comments. Two yeah. times? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, which were super yeah. helpful. So I highly recommend if you need your essay reviewed, um, Boris is, is your guy. Absolutely. <laughs> or Elijah. You can find them both on boristhepa.com. Nice. What the heck was that? Anyway, okay. So, um, so we talked about how you got into medicine in general, then what you did, your journey to undergrad. And then you were just like way more motivated and way better at studying after your time in community college. And so did you just like kick butt at Chapel Hill or, or did you still kind of struggle? Yeah, I initially, I um, came into it and I, my first semester was really rough. Like mm -hmm. I, I like enrolled in um, like two like STEM courses, mm -hmm. um, one being like Orgo or Orgo one. And that was just a whole nightmare. I ended up having to like withdraw from it. Oh no, it that just, bad? Yeah, it was that bad. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that happened. And then like I underloaded um, also because I was like starting like a new job in the area there when I moved. Mm. Um, but it was just so much to just adjust to like the rigor of like the academic difference between, you know, community college and like the university. True. Um, so yeah, I would say definitely like the academics and just fitting into like the school itself and like trying to get involved in like clubs and stuff. But then I felt like it got much better. Um, I think I did like, yeah, I felt like I just, um, I think it's honestly just orgo and like how I just orgo. like associate <laughs> with that class that made it so bad. But other than that, it was like, it was like okay yeah other than like still like the hard classes like genetics which oof, that was, yeah that not was a fan of genetics too. either <laughs> I, I think you're not alone with the orgo thing most people hate orgo right yeah you know, it's just it's tough but so numbers wise so high school 3.2 uh yeah. community college what was your gpa coming out of there um it was a 3.9 
Okay. So 3.9, yeah. almost 4.0, like you did very well in community college. And then you go into Chapel Hill, four-year university. How well yeah. do you do there? Um, so I applied with a 3.9 as well. What do you mean? Like, out of Chapel was... Hill? Yeah. Oh, so you just kept going at that like 3.9 level once you transferred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, wow. I guess the CASPA GPA, because I applied during my um I was a rising senior. So this was like after I completed my junior year. Mm -hmm. So it was that GPA, I guess, from both like I think CASPA like averages out all the mm -hmm. courses from both places. Gotcha. So you applied yeah. to PA school with a 3.9. Mm -hmm. part of it from four-year university, part of it from uh, from community college. And did you get in your first time? I did. Oh, holy crap. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. I believe that's not super loud. I'll adjust the volume if I have. <laughs> but no. Okay. So you got in on your first try with, so you applied as a junior. I did. Right. A rising senior. So after only completing one year of university, right. two years of community college you got in on your first try I did some people probably wouldn't believe that you know what i mean they'd be like yeah. oh but i have to go for your university and get a 4 like no you don't right Not right that's what i like i stress so much like community college is amazing because it just gives you like mm -hmm. just such a good like period of time where you can really like get your like your study habits in and mm -hmm. just i guess like a foundation of like um how to like balance and like also like the coursework and stuff. Yeah. So it's also really flexible as well. True. I feel like so work, having time can... to like get your patient care in as well. Right. True. I worked like multiple jobs like mm -hmm. during those two years that I was um, there. Morning and evening classes like their community colleges yeah. close around people online who too. Work. Right. Online. That's yeah. awesome. So it's actually like a really good idea for pre PAs, isn't it? I think so. I recommend it. Yeah. Wow. Okay, even if it's like a whole separate part of the video here. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. Even if it's like a semester or two semester, even, or if you mm -hmm. want to like get your prereqs to that you couldn't get like when you were mm -hmm. completing like your four year degree. Sure. How yeah. many PA schools did you apply to? I applied to three. Three. Um, That's it. Yeah. It's oh, so it was honestly like out of impulse, like I said, because. Mm -hmm. I wasn't planning on applying till after I graduated since I haven't taken the GRE sure. and I haven't taken a lot of like the prereqs to like orgo like biochem I didn't finish medical terminology either so a lot of the, the common ones that a lot of the programs require mm -hmm. so one day I was just like let me see if this is even possible for me to apply and so I found those like three programs that I could so that's where um, I ended up applying to the ones that you already had most of the prereqs for. Right, right. And that didn't didn't accept um, the GRE test. Right, which a lot of programs don't even need it, which is great. Did you get into all three? I didn't. So I was rejected at one school and then got two interview invites, um, but I only interviewed and accepted at one. Mm. So one accepted you, then the second one after the interview, they didn't accept you? So it was because like I was accepted already and I had to make my decision, but my next interview would ha wouldn't have been until like three months later and I had to oh. like submit my deposit and everything. So um, I think, yeah, though it was like my also like probably like my top choice out of those three schools too. So you may so have got into two. Yeah, potentially, okay. but. People in the PA community or the pre-PA community, this is probably blowing their minds, right? <laughs> Two years at community college, only one year of undergrad. Yeah, tremendously good GPA, 3.9, just killed it. Um, also got your hours at the same time. Also some extracurriculars and a medical mission trip and like a lot of good stuff in the application. But two years community college, one year undergrad, got into one, possibly two out of the three programs you applied to. I will say I do have like three withdrawals on my transcript though. Apparently it don't matter, does it? Yeah, right, exactly. Damn. Yeah, and I mean, those were times where I was just, I couldn't balance it or because Orgo, I was like, if I, mm -hmm. if I continue, I'd probably fail the course. So I was like, I'm not mm -hmm. gonna take that hit. And I was like, I'll just take it at a later, later time. But then mm -hmm. I knew I don't need Orgo for PA school <laughs> and I got Ooh. in without it. I don't think you do. I don't think it's on most uh, schools prereqs. Neither is biochem and medical terminology. If you really need oh, it, really? it's like a 
Oh, it's they the one for, summer course like, in state for me. Like a lot of the schools mm. do. Maybe they yeah. do. I know not all of them do. Mm. Yeah, definitely not med term. Like some schools just incorporate med term into their own thing. Um, but man, that's actually blowing my mind right now. That's crazy. Like if I if I was advising you, like right out of high school, or let's say after your first semester of um of community college, I'd probably say you should probably get to a brick and mortar for your university and then prove yourself there. But okay. I would have been wrong, completely wrong. Also, was this during COVID time? This was. Uh -huh, that, that's another so thing. my second. I was like, it's my spring semester of freshman year that we went online. Mm -hmm. Spring yeah, semester, it, freshman year of uh, community college. Of community college, and then when yeah. I started at UNC, the third year, my, my junior year, mm -hmm. it was back in person. So I did like basically my entire like community college time online got it i think okay so that situation may not be repeatable outside of covid because during yeah. the time a lot of pa schools were much more lenient on like getting classes online community college x y and z so yeah, that, that may have been a factor mm -hmm. still excellent that you got really good got lucky. i'm just saying i got lucky it's possible. I mean, uh, there's no one right answer. You know, it's whatever works for your life. But I'm just saying that is possibly a factor. You know, like the success may not be reproducible now that COVID's basically over. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so I take that like, into account. Yeah, a lot of it. They're a lot more lenient with it during COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for obvious reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Also, we have ten minutes left on this recording. If we go over, I'll just send you a brand new link to your email because okay. Zoom. Uh, only lets me do 40 minutes unless I pay them. I don't want to pay them. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. Um, but anyway, okay. So right out of junior year, got accepted, finished your senior year, knocked out some prereqs, kept your GPA high, I take it? Yeah, yeah. It dropped. I mean, it, I just graduated with a 3.8, so it's not much big of difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Was, yeah. And uh, how did you do your first semester in PA school? Um, I did okay mentally emotionally in every way physically not so much no but, what do you mean you know, i it was a, a huge adjustment for sure like mm -hmm. just i was not used to like i mean nobody's used to like the multiple exams that you take in one week no cruel um, so either. right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting is. used to that was a lot mm -hmm. yeah and I, I guess you know going into the spring semester um I kind of like have an idea of like how that already goes, but I feel like because it was the first semester, I was like, I don't know how these exams goes for each professor. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, just how am I going to, how is this possible? Like that was my initial thought. So I how felt like, I went, yeah, 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 that was my thought. I was like, <laughs> this feels impossible. I don't know how I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to go into it super hardcore. And that yeah. ended up like, I mean, I had to give myself grace, like over time. Mm -hmm. I could not have not done that the way mm -hmm. I studied in the beginning. What do you mean by super hardcore? Like sleeping, no, no sleeping at all. Just like studying every day or yeah. just, like, study methods weren't really mature yet. Right. Right. So in the beginning, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't want to fail out. Like, I just need to study as much as I can and mm -hmm. do everything I can to like make it through. So like I used to be able to like go home after like an eight to five day of classes and study from like six to like three, like 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. That's a lot. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it was like that. And then over time, I could not do that. Like 9, 10 p.m., I just, my brain just shut off. <laughs> and I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. So I think over time I learned to like just stop and go to sleep and then just wake up early and like kind of resume studying. And that's helped or that works much better for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how you and Elijah say the same thing because he's killed it his first semester. I think he had like a 3.9, 3.8. Um, and he's at a very hard program. But he said that I knew going in, I'm going to go hard in the beginning, yeah, like as hard as I can, and then yeah. maybe peter off if I need to, but like just give it everything your very first semester. Yeah. Which is what he did. And he, he accidentally, uh, he got very good grades. Um, he did end up finding new study methods and kind of like just adjusted things to make his life a little bit easier. 
you yeah. know, it works or doesn't work. But at first you're just kind of going, you know, guns blazing. You're going as hard as you can. Exactly. You're just trying to figure it all out, seeing yeah. what works, what doesn't work. And then just take it honestly, like one week, one day, one exam at a time. <laughs> Is that your advice to first year PA students? I, yeah. I would say, yeah, I mean, you just kind of have to like get through it. You feel like in the beginning, you're like, oh my God, like, how am I going to do it? But yeah, I would say like, give yourself a lot of grace. Um, Cause like by the end of the semester, I was like, like if it was like a chill week where I only had like one exam, I would just, there were days where I just would go home and do nothing for the rest of the night nice. and just chill. Yeah. But on like harder weeks with like three, four exams, I like, you know, didn't sleep, but right. you know, just trying to find the balance. And honestly, like as time goes on, you kind of pick up on how much time you need to study and for each class specifically too. Mm -hmm. So that's nice to know, you know, just how to approach each exam for each so class. Would you say every class is different? I would say a little bit different. Yeah. Like yeah. every professor like is like different. Yeah, I feel like as far as like the professors too, like how they structure their exams, um, but also like classes like physiology or anatomy and physiology. Well, physiology specifically, it's more conceptual. Mm -hmm. So I know for me, that's like um, something I struggle with, like just understanding like and putting it together. So I spent a lot of time. I knew I needed more time on that. Mm -hmm. Whereas like classes that um, are like principles of medicine where we, um, basically like, like if it was like all like the respiratory diseases or conditions, learning all the treatment, um, and symptoms and all that, like, that's just like memorization and just mm -hmm. repetitiveness. So I feel like that I can like get down quicker than like understanding like harder stuff. So like knowing yourself, you're good at memorizing. You're not as good as conceptualizing. So you kind of spend more right. time on the stuff you need to. And like EKG too, that was a whole, mm -hmm. oh my God, I still don't EKGs know. But... There will just always be a struggle, man. <laughs> They're yeah. always so hard. You learn the big things, the really important things and, you know, leave the nitty gritty stuff to the cardiologist. Right. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys read Dubin's? Um, yeah, I, I did have the book. Yep. No yeah, book. Big shout out to Dubin's EKG. If you want to learn EKGs from the ground up, like very, very systematically very like colorful pictures starts super simple goes super complicated like slowly dubins 100 yes. percent. we had to read it over christmas break really yeah it was fun what? that sucks well How i was looking on the break? calendar and it was like okay we're going really hard but at least like here's like five weeks we get christmas break it's going to be great and they're like, oh, by the way, you have to read the CKG book and there's going to be an exam the first day you come back. And we're like, what? come on. Oh, my gosh. Come on, Lemoyne. Oh. What the heck? But I mean, that's what you get for a 24 month program. Right. Like yeah. everything is just condensed and condensed and condensed. Mm -hmm. Is your program 24 months? It is 24 months. Oof. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's OK. Yeah. yeah. But you'll be a PA much quicker. So that's cool. Yeah, I feel like it was also like because I I have friends who go to programs that are like system based, mm -hmm. but our program isn't system based. So we were like we're like in a million like directions of like um, material. So like we started EKG on like the second day, wow. but then something in like anatomy was totally different from all the conditions that we were learning in a different class. But right. then we had psychiatry and we were learning like all the drugs and all like the mm -hmm. diagnoses for um psychiatry specifically but then in pharmacology it would be something totally completely different so it's just yeah right. it's a it's lot so yeah yeah what she means by system based is like programs that are very well organized and executed like in anatomy and physiology you'd be learning cardiac and then in like clinical medicine you'd be learning about cardiac diseases and in pharmacology you'd be learning about like blood pressure cholesterol cardiac drugs procedures that kind of thing and so you'd be like everything builds on top of each other so like all the base knowledge is kind of the same and it's easier to learn. Some programs try to do that and then they fail miserably and like you end up getting like partially that and then partially like new stuff. And some programs just like don't even try because it's easier to organize to not do system based. So you might be like learning cardiac anatomy, but doing like Mimi said, psychiatry, drugs in right. pharmacology and in clinic medicine, you'll be learning like nephrology. Exactly. Like, this is really a pain in the butt, but yeah. sometimes that happens.
Yeah, I guess, I mean, sometimes it helps because, like, you're like, oh, wait, I remember this. Yeah. Like, when you're studying for, like, the multiple different million directions, it's mm -hmm. difficult. It's, yeah, it's hard. It's not easy. Yeah. But that's okay. It's worth it. So, Mimi, would you say you have any advice to other first-year physician assistant students? I do. Um, yeah, so one thing that I um, realized this semester is, like, how much, like, in general, we, like, undervalue, like, exercise. I feel like, for me, it helps me so much, like, just with, like, my productivity and, like, my attention span, because um, that's very limited especially when you're like sitting in a classroom the entire day, like trying to pay attention mm -hmm. and also just like your overall like mental health. And uh, I, I'm the type of person where I've like been working out since like high school. And so like, that's important to me. But then when I start PA school, I was like, you know, I'll just brush it off. Like right. I need to be studying, I need to do this. It's more important. And so mid semester, I feel like mid to late semester, it really like I felt miserable, like I was, miserable to go to class every day and i was just exhausted and i had like nothing in me i was just so anxious all the time and i was like i just need to like have some sort of like routine so i try this new thing i like challenge myself and i was like i'm gonna go to the gym during my like one hour lunch break every day and see how that goes and um i started doing that and it's honestly such a game changer and it's like su such a like a small time frame, but you know, I just rush to the gym, get at least like 10, 15 minutes in, you know, I'll just do like, like an incline treadmill or um, do some weights, upper body stuff really quick, and then jump in the shower and then like rush back to class and then like eat something quick. But I feel like it's just so nice because you come back to class and you're like refreshed because you just showered. But then also like now your headspace is a little more clear and like mm -hmm. it helps me like in the afternoon because i know that's when i crash like yeah. afternoon classes like oh gosh like my head is like out the door so like it helps a little bit more to just kind of be present um in the moment and then yeah i just feel like um that just helps so much like for anyone mm -hmm. um it's and even like what would you say it's so counterintuitive because like Let's be real, like at least in my experience, during that lunch break, everybody stays in the same classroom. They yep. study some more, they do more quizlets, they might talk and just chat and do nothing. You know, right. all that's it's good, it's productive, but it sounds counterintuitive to like have to walk to another building, exert yourself physically, yep. and then shower and hurry up and come back. And that that action would actually make you better at studying and better at learning than the people who spend more time doing it. Yeah, because I was that person, I would just stay in the classroom um, and just kind of like review my notes yeah. during that day. But I was like not nothing because I was like trying to eat my lunch and like mm -hmm. try to study at the same time. But that was just I was not gaining anything out of it. And I know like when I go to the gym, I I can just put my headphones on and blast to my favorite music. And also like you can even like because I was the type of person where I was like, I feel like I'm wasting my time going to the gym, but I like even if it wasn't like during my lunch hour, like if it was like on the weekend or something, I'll bring like my iPad and I'll just do like Anki or like look at my lecture slides to make me feel less bad that I'm not at home studying. <laughs> yeah, because in PA school, you're so guilty if you spend one minute doing anything else. Yep. So it's like, yeah, exactly. I'm wasting my time. I could have been studying. I could have learned like five note cards by now. Right. But like it's it's not even just the mood and the energy. There's like studies. It's like neuroplasticity gets increased or something. So your brain literally gets better at learning when you do some exercise. Not like while you're exercising. You don't have to be like taping a freaking note card to your bench press and like <laughs> ST stagnant <Yeah>. elevation. <laughs> you don't have to do that. But it's just like the fact that you are exercising, you're like moving your lymphatic fluid and your blood around and like certain factors get, I don't know, I'm not a neuroscientist, but certain factors get expressed and you just like you're healthier, your mood is better, you have more energy, you actually need less sleep, not more unless you're exercising crazy. Um, and like your brain is just more primed to learn. So yeah. I can't agree with Mimi more. Like it's such a big difference, not even a lot, just like 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day.
Yeah, like I, I mean, even like I actually like during Black Friday, I got like a walking like treadmill, but it can it can go up like to speeds where you can run. So uh -huh. like, um, I'll even try to get myself just to do like 10 minutes of like a run like yeah. on it. And that just that just changes it so much because after I feel like more motivated and I'm like, okay, I can do anything. I don't know, it just gives you like a boost. Serotonin or whatever, yeah. Yeah, like some feel good chemical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just you feel better. Yeah, you just do. So yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that one big piece of advice incorporate exercise even a little tiny bit. Yeah, little tiny bit. You'd be shocked. You'd be yeah. absolutely even shocked. I'm like, I'm still I tell myself that some I mean, I have weeks where I don't follow that. But now like, yeah. going to the spring semester, I'm like, this is something that I need to like continue like, doing like consistently. Because I know, I mean, it's so hard because it's like um, you just have so much, like a million things to do and like to get yourself to actually move your body. Like I know like how hard that can be to yeah. get yourself to. Yeah, but trust me, just do it. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, I feel like the hardest part, like even like going to the gym is just to get there. But like once you're there, yeah, like it's it's just you. Literally, it is. You're unstoppable, literally. <laughs> What else would you tell a first uh, first year PA student that's struggling? Um, I would say, yeah, I would just say like, um, like just continue to like be adaptive to like your learning style, mm -hmm. um, since not what you used to do in undergrad, um, that might not work or it might work, and just trying to find like, um, like a balance between that, you know, because every class might be different with how you study, how you take notes in class even. Um, so being open to trying that, I think that's huge. But also, again, like I was like saying, like be graceful to yourself and, um, you know, like you're gonna eventually like by like the end of the semester, like you're like, okay, well, I kind of like have an idea of like how much time I need to this or to this. Mm -hmm. So. It still sucks. It still sucks. But Always like, you kind of, I mean, you have an idea of like um, how things go, you know? So the, the first part of it, first part of semester is rough. I mean, it doesn't get easier, but at least you, you know, you have like a sense of how things go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I found that like second semester was actually a lot harder, mm -hmm. but it was For also easier at the same time because you know what you're doing already. Yeah. And GPAs tended to go up second semester, not down, even though the content was harder, there was more of it. And we had less time for question on exams. So everything got harder, but like, we're just so used to it now. It's just like easier, you know? So second yeah. semester is harder, but easier. Yeah. I've heard that from like a lot of people too, from everyone that I've talked to about second semester. It made no sense. <laughs> when people told me that it's just like, what do you mean? It's harder, but easier. It's like, it's harder, right. but it's like easier. I don't know. Because uh, one of my next topics is going to be like uh, attrition rates and how like mm. you see someone gets their acceptance letter and they're like, I'm going to be a PA. And everyone's like, yeah, you are. And I'm like, maybe you are. Uh, because a lot of people do fail out, you know, and it seems yeah. to be getting worse post COVID because a lot of programs haven't really adjusted and found their uh, their footing again. Um, okay. So it's really, really good. You guys didn't lose anyone. Your program is probably really legit. Yeah, I feel like also just like our program, like cohort like we're willing just to like help each other out with like yes. making study guides and like working together mm -hmm. um just like if someone's like like i can just like go to anyone in my class and if i'm confused about something like they'll ex like they'll take time to like explain it to me mm -hmm. and i like think that yeah that has a lot to do with just um like how well everyone is doing mm -hmm. and also just like how helpful like the faculty is too. Yeah. So you guys yeah. have a really good like program culture. Right. That's awesome. No, that, that's really awesome for you. I'm really happy that you're in a good program. Yeah. And I mean, that varies year to year, like right, the best program exactly. in the world can just accept a bunch of people who seem good on paper and then they're just not team players and it just doesn't work that year and it just doesn't work that year. Right. Yeah. I also think it like every program has a different like, um, like grading policies to like how many, like your, the grade that you need on every 
exam or if you like get a certain grade in, in the class, then um, like for ours, like if you get um, a C in any class, then that's like an automatic, automatic failure. So like you have to like, I don't know, it's like a whole nother process. Like you have to like retake it, but it will be like the next year, like the following cohort. Oh, you can't remediate anything? I mean, like, you know, you definitely can remediate like, like exams, but I'm talking about like, if you like the grade that you get in the class, if it's like anything um, below that, then you would. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ours was okay. the same way. It was like 80% was the bottom, 79 is failing. Uh, but I was talking to Elijah and I guess at Rutgers, I could be wrong, but he said that uh, C is okay. So like a yeah. D is failing, so like 70 is fine. Yeah, ours is 73. So like 73, four exams is okay. um, passing. Or no, ours was 80, but I think one class, the hardest class was like 78 or something, 77. Oh, uh, so it's like dependent on the class. Yeah, because one class was just insanely hard, but it was uh, very substantive. But anyway, okay, we're getting in the weeds. So that's your advice to current first year PA students who might be struggling. What is your advice to PA school applicants, people who want to be just like you and next year get into a PA program? Yeah, I feel like this is um like I've just this is like something that I'm really like kind of passionate about because I feel like I have so many friends that are in this spot and it's the same things that I'm hearing. But also when I was going through it, I also really related to how they were feeling. But um, my biggest piece of advice is like just to be intentional with like your mindset and how you approach the um, application process because it's like so easy to like compare yourself and um, just think about how competitive the process is and like just focus on like the negative part about how you're not gonna get in. Um, and I mean, it's so it's, like, it's terrifying. It's probably like the one of the most terrifying things I've done It's just like applying, like waiting. And I, I like, it's, it's a hard process, yeah. but because I was like the type of person where um, I do beat myself up a lot about it. And I feel like a lot of people in my position can agree to that. I kind of had to like, really switch my mindset to thinking um differently so i feel like instead um i was kind of like thinking about it like this is like my only not my only but like my one opportunity where i could like show to like the admissions committee like this is what i want to do this is my passion and like this is what i like bring to the table and so you show you show cast that through like your personal statement and your um, like your the way you like describe like your activities and stuff. I feel like that's how you like someone can really get to know you on paper. Like my like I mean I feel like all like the stats and everything like that's all general. There's just numbers, but like it's just your story. Like everyone's story is different, and I like to think about it as like you're on like American Idol and. <laughs> The judges, okay. Okay, the judges yeah. are like the people reviewing your applications mm -hmm. and in the background, in the crowd, that's like your family, your friends, like your coworkers, supervisors, professors, those are all people rooting for you mm -hmm. and like want you, want you to um, pursue this. They all support you. So like, this is your shot to show them like who you are as a person um, and just give it your all. And I feel like if you think about it that way um, and just kind of like appreciate like all the hard work that you've dedicated to this profession like this, you know, this is like what you want to do. Um, if you can think about it that way, then that would be that would help you be successful, because I know for me, if I'm all, like I am a negative person, I I'm working on like I feel like I in the past I was so much more negative, but like this process specifically, I was like, Mimi, like I talked to myself, I'm like, you cannot think like this because if you do, you're not gonna get in anywhere, you know? Cause it's like, that's just how it is. Like if you're negative, it just won't work. But if you kind of go into it, like this is what I wanna do, I'm gonna show in on paper everything that um, makes me unique compared to like other applicants that will work in your favor for sure. Absolutely. And also have really good grades. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, 
the unspoken obvious truth, but everything else, yeah, spot on, 100%. Uh, all you could do is give it your all. But by give it your all, I don't mean like hurry up and get get the process done and fill it out as fast as you can and be like, ooh, that was hard. Uh, yeah. Because if you do that, you're going to miss things. Yeah, you're going to miss sure. spacing. You're going to, it's going to be sloppy. Things are going to be not aligned. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised. So for someone who's looked at hundreds, if not at probably over a thousand at this point applications, the PDF version of the cast, but people send me that when I review their application, hundreds, if not thousands at this point. And you would be shocked for someone who looks at this many of them, how easy it is to tell who cares and who doesn't. Hmm. It's so easy. And sometimes I'll be, I'll admit it. I'll jump to conclusions. But if I do, somebody else might too, reviewing your application at a program. So don't give them anything to look at that just is not like attention to detail. You know, oh, yeah. if you have one space after a period, that's going to be how you're going to do the entire application. Mm -hmm. you did bullet points for one of the sections, you're doing the same bullet point for everything. If you're going to capitalize, you know, PA, if you're going to capitalize this and that, that's how it is going to be uniform throughout your entire application. Like no mistakes, no typos, no grammar weirdness, just like make yeah. it very, very neat and clean and go through it hundreds of times, just every single time. See if you can like with fresh eyes, try to find something wrong. I know Mimi's like that because we went through it together. Um, I did. Do you know, did you know that I did mine in like two weeks? What do you mean in two weeks? Like I wrote that essay in like two weeks. That's fine. Yeah. And like, I mean, I, I mean, submitted my application in like the next week after that. Yeah. What about the rest of your application though? Did you like really quickly get that done or did you like take some, uh, some time with it? I mean, I knew those that two weeks, like literally I was like on it all day. Like mm -hmm. just how I was like always editing it. And mm -hmm. like, especially with the activity descriptions too, I feel like, yeah. Like you can go about it, like kind of like describing it in a, like a resume, mm -hmm. kind of like I did this, I did this, but I try to like think about like what was the most like impactful thing that I like took from the mm -hmm. job or experience. Yeah, I think you could do both. You can make it bullet points and I actually tell people to make it uniform, like this many hours. These are mm -hmm. my responsibilities. This is what I learned. This is what I learned or this is what I learned. And like, this is what I took from the opportunity. And just have the same exact categories for everything. That way it makes it easier. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, obviously, whatever you did worked. I haven't seen Mimi's application for like probably a year and a half now. Because uh, we worked together on it. I saw it. I like helped her with her essay. I think we did an interview. I can't remember. We did a bunch of different stuff, but we got her in. Um, but yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of work. It really it does. does. And if you want to... A lot of thinking yeah. too. What's a lot that? of like self-reflection. Because I was like, why do I want to be PA? I don't know. You know what? If you can't it answer that for time. yourself, how are you supposed to answer it for a stranger? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you want help with that. Yes. Yes. Blurry. In fact, I'll, I'll unblur my background. Never mind. We're fine. This book <laughs> right here, the link will be in the description. It's also on my website. Literally step by step. If you don't know, if you just like know that you want to be a PA, but you have no idea why. And you're like, how am I supposed to write this personal statement? Literally step by step. Simple question by simple question. This is your answer. Okay. So that's enough uh, free advertising and plugging my book there. But yeah, um, if you still have no idea, just sit down with a journal and be like, okay, why? Like, what do I possibly want out of this career? Why is this my career? Think about it. Don't just like write the story of your life. That's easy. Or like try to copy somebody else's, you know, just like actually think about why you want to do this. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like the personal statement is one of the most important pieces of your application. I mean, it's the biggest part, but it's like what they read and they can either like they're more, if they're like more interested in reading more about you. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's the, like the one thing that can help you like stand out the most too. Yeah. It's the only like interesting thing. Like you can get into right. the experiences, what people have done. That's really cool, but it's the only like personal, literally personal part of the application. Everything else is just numbers and titles and stats. Yeah. Like this is actually like human. Yes, human. <laughs> yeah, it's like the only human part of the application. Yeah. And, you know, people in medicine, we're kind of like, you know, we care about yeah. humans. That's what we do. We, yeah. we work with humans. We like humans. We want to help humans um, most of the time anyway. Uh, so it's like, that's the only human part of the application. So take it seriously. And buy the book. Buy the book. Buy the book. <laughs> buy the book. <laughs> buy the book. <laughs>
and use all of your services because he oh, helps. Oh yeah, no, them. literally. So that's another thing is, I, so I feel like this is getting way more popular the last few years since I started. Because when I started, there was maybe like 10 PA YouTubers, at least that I knew of. Now there's hundreds. Oh yeah. Like hundreds and hundreds and everyone's got their services and everyone's like, oh, I can help you, blah, 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 mock interview. Everyone's like trying to get into this. So yes, definitely get someone to help you screen that person out make sure it's someone that like your friend has worked with or see if they have reviews how long have they been doing this like don't get help from someone who's just gonna make things worse oh. you know um so yeah just be careful who you choose yeah yeah for sure yeah i feel like um yeah definitely do that but i think i highly recommend anyone to consider any sort of like service even for like both i mean personal statement and um, interviews because like it just it's really good I feel like it helped me a lot I don't know how I would have gone in without you if I'm being honest like it just gives you like a different like you like give a different perspective because you've been through the process and you're like you know like you've been working with like hundreds of students on this so like I mean you can I could like let anyone read it but it's like if you've been through the process you know how it works you know you've read so many different essays and like interviewed so many people like they like that just gives you so much like specific feedback um and can help tailor your um your personal statement into like what they are looking for but also like the interviews like um just what your strengths are what your weaknesses are and like what you should shouldn't do mm -hmm. that really, really helpful. Yeah. And I'll be brutally honest. I've seen some absolute train wreck interviews. I've seen some phenomenal interviews and I'm happy to tell everybody every which way what it is. Um, speaking of the interview, this isn't really what we're going to focus on today. We're just about done here, but uh, I just wanted to kind of bring attention to how Mimi talks specifically on camera, like one, how confident she is and positive. She's like always smiling and she's like looking at the camera. She's like not super shy, but like she communicates just clearly. She speaks really clearly. She doesn't talk too fast. She doesn't talk too slow. Like she's just easy to listen to. I don't know if you get that watching this video, but she's just easy to listen to. So if you're going to copy anything from Mimi to try to get into school, copy her mannerisms in your interview. Just like be like that. Be just easy to listen to. Be smiley, but not like exaggerated. You know what I mean? Just, just chill, confident, easy to listen to. That's what I would, that's the feedback I would give you if this was an interview. And so like everybody watching, if you're preparing for an interview, just like be like Mimi, it's fantastic. Just be like that. Yeah. Right. But inside I'm like, ah. Yeah, we all are. Yeah. Well, just the way you're presenting yourself. Make it so you make it. Good. That's my motto. Yeah, absolutely. Just laugh, like just smile a lot and look at the camera. But, but also then, talk. Yeah, also talk. Practice, yeah. practice everywhere you go. Thank you. Like yes, that's... practice, practice, practice. Because yeah, they're gonna get to their interview and they'll be like, <laughs> and they'll be like, so why do you want to be a PA? Like, but Mimi told me to just smile and look at the camera. Like, well, yeah, <laughs> too, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of anyway, that. yeah, be like Mimi if you want to get into school. <laughs> anyway, any parting words of wisdom? No, like. Well, Guys, yeah. buy the book. Yes, buy the book. Buy the book. Buy the merch. Yeah, yeah, and and, and the mug, you? the mug, and the mug. Merch. Okay, I, I'm done. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, no, um, definitely do those because it's well worth it. And the merch, get merch. the merch mug. Uh, is that the only thing you have? What else do you sell? Um, you there's a bunch of stuff. It's all like in the little banner below the video. Um, oh, yes. yeah, there's mugs like BTPA, there's the one that says like, um, there's a Superman logo and it's like, I'm a PA, what's your superpower? Nice. There's a bunch of stuff, oh. good stuff. Nice. Yeah, but anyway, parting words of wisdom. What do you think, Mimi? Yeah, so I was just say like, just the number one thing is just believe in yourself. It sounds so cheesy, but like, that's like all you can do. I mean, like that is like the one superpower that you can have because that will like take you so far like you know like all applicants like you know you want it so bad deep in you you just have to like portray that to the world and show that this 
is literally like deep in your soul. Like yeah. this is the path that you want to take and you know, you've like worked so hard to get to that point. Um, so in using like all your resources, um, reaching out to literally everyone, like for my interviews, I went through my contact list, everyone that has ever interviewed me, I asked them for my opinion. I mean, the internet has so much out there. So there's so much help out, but the one thing, just continue believing in yourself. Like, you know, you want it bad. It's your passion. So always continue to do that, even though it feels like you're never going to get there because you will. Yeah. Yeah. Like something seems impossible until it's already done and then you forget about it. And then you might be reflecting weeks, you know, months, years later, you're like, wait, I did that. Right. It's yeah. Not possible anymore. It's just like, yeah, that was just a thing. X, Y, and Z. This is how you do it. The end. But like yeah. when you're still kind of struggling up that hill, you're like, this is impossible. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. In the moment, but then it's worth it. Like that's how I felt about PA school. I was like, I, my light at the end of the tunnel is finishing my semester. Mm -hmm. And I look back and I'm like, whoa, like that just happened. But yeah, I feel like in those moments, it's when you really have to like, just um continue just to like manifest it i yeah that's another thing just manifest for everything i wrote it on a wall <laughs> i was like i'm gonna get into pa school or i am gonna get into pa school and like just put it into existence put it into existence and just keep like walking towards that exactly while also like doing everything you can in your power yeah. to like, get there too for sure couldn't have said it better myself mimi thank you for sharing your wisdom good luck in the rest of school Thank you. Thank no. you for having me. Absolutely. Maybe we'll get you back on after the next semester. If you ever have any advice, you know, shoot it my way. I'll see if I could share it with the people. Um, yeah, that's essentially it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have questions for Mimi, if you want to contact her for whatever reason, we'll drop her social media in the uh, description for the video. And yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Woo. All right. Stop recording.